in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to uh, model a basic dog bone sample and uh, put it into SolidWorks simulation to do like simulate the uh, stresses and strains that will happen to the sample. Um, what we'll start doing is open SolidWorks and start a new part. So when you select new, let's see this part file, make one of those. And we're going to do one of the ASTM dog bones. So you can find on Wikipedia the dimensions of the dog bones. And we'll do the most complex one so that if you do any of the others, it'll be a little bit easier. Okay, the first thing we'll do is we'll start a sketch. So under the sketch tab, click sketch. Uh, for the 3D printer, the front plane is usually the built plate for the printer. So we'll, we'll click on front plane to sketch. Um, for this dog bone, they have what they call uh, the overall length and width. We'll use a rectangle for that. So click the rectangle. When we hover over the origin, we'll see the yellow box here. It's a relation that means coincident, which means that my point will start exactly at the origin. I'll click once and move the mouse out and click again. One thing we're going to note here is our units down in the right it says IPS, that's inches, pounds, seconds. And these inches on, Wikipe uh, on Wikipedia, they are dimensioned in inches. So we'll just make sure that that's consistent. If we switch that, it will kick you out of the sketch. And if you have to get back into it, then you will right click over here and click the top left icon, which would get you back into the sketch or edit the sketch. Okay. With this overall length and width, we're going to double click these dimensions and input those. We're, we're going to do a type 4 dog bone here. That is 4.5 inches long and 0 0.75 inches wide. Okay. Then there's a, a narrow length and a narrow width. And this is kind of the reduced area portion of the dog bone. We'll click the rectangle again. Click the center point again. And click somewhere over here. We want to be careful that we don't click on this line because it's going to add a relation that we don't want. Okay, so click somewhere in here. And we're going to click Smart Dimension to do these dimensions as well. The length of this narrow length is 1.3 inches. The width of the narrow region is 0 0.25 inches. At this point we have uh, two radius that we have to worry about. We have a uh, a fillet radius and an outer radius. For for the really simple uh, ASTM dog bones, we're going to just put one radius, which we would use a tangent arc to create. I'll show you that quick. Start tangent arc. We will start from this point. Click and uh, get it to go all the other way. I guess it's not this one. We'll start from another one. Okay, so we would draw one like this, and we would um, hit Smart Dimension, and we would dimension this radius. For the other ones, they're typically a radius of uh, 3 inches. For ours, I'm going to delete this, uh, delete this arc. We're going to make two arcs. There's an inner one and an outer one. <clears throat> In which case, we'll make this tangent arc, but we just won't connect it to the outside. We'll make one go this way, and then again to the outside. Okay. Hit escape to escape out of that tool. We could zoom in by using a scroll bar here. And we're going to make a couple relations here. Um, this line and this outer line, if I hold shift and make sure they're both selected, we'll make sure they have a tangent radius here. You can also click on the left side here. Okay. And then we're going to uh, make sure that this is also tangent with the straight line here, which it is. You can check right there. If I hover over this, you see both lines that are pink. Those are tangent with each other, as well as this one. And if I click on this line, then also these two. Okay, now we need to dimension those two radii. For the inner radius on this one, it is 0.56 inches. For the outer radius, it is 
one inch. <coughs> okay. Now you see I've only done one. I'm going to use symmetry to my benefit and mirror that about the vertical and horizontal axis. To do that, I need some construction lines. So I'm going to go over to this line tool on the top left, drop down, select center line. Um, you can also, if you just selected the line tool, just make sure that this four construction box is checked off. Do the same thing. Okay, we're going to start from the origin. Click once. Make sure that you have a horizontal relation here, the yellow box. Click again. You can hit escape. You can also double click. Okay, make sure the four construction is checked off again and draw a vertical line from the origin. <coughs> escape. Okay, now I want to mirror these two arcs, so select both of them. Click this uh, mirror entities button, and you see they're pre-selected now, and you want to copy those and mirror about this vertical line. You see they show up? Hit the checkbox over here. Okay, now select all four of them. One, and hold shift. Two, three, now we're going to mirror these entities and mirror about the horizontal line. And we'll see they show up up top. Hit the checkbox. Okay, now we have some extra lines in here we don't need to extrude. Mainly those are the sides in between. If I hit the trim entities button and choose trim to closest, I can click this line. Oops. This line. Okay. For some reason, it looks like these are not connected somewhere. I'm not. I guess we can just click the top one here and the bottom one. <coughs> these two. There we go. Okay, so we trim all the lines that we don't need. And this new SolidWorks version actually puts the closed loops. Uh, when the loop is absolutely closed, it fills it in with this gray color. So now we know that there is a closed loop in those entities, and we can extrude it. For this thickness, it's supposed to be between 0.28 and 0.55 inches to be valid for, or sorry, smaller than 0.16 inches. Um, to be uh, used in this orientation. So, to extrude this dog bone cross section, go to Features, Extrude Boss Space, and we'll extrude 0.15 inches because that's small. Hit checkbox, and that's our part. Okay. Uh, now we're going to go to the Simulation tab and do a new study. And it's going to be a static study. So, we'll do that. Hit the checkbox. What that's going to do is open up a new tab on the bottom here, static one. And I'm going to apply a tensile load to this. Uh, one of the first things I have to do is select the material. So here in the drop down, you have material. I'll just choose as like ABS, polycarbonate, just as some kind of plastic. It doesn't really matter. The next thing is if I have multiple parts, I will choose how they are connected to each other. Um, make sure that you apply the material here as well. So you can use this one if it's not in this drop down list. I'm just going to use this one. Okay, and now we have that check on top of our part. The material is selected and it's also listed here. Next is our fixtures. We're going to pick that our uh, part is fi has fixed geometry on one side. We'll choose the bottom face. I use the middle mouse button and drag. Okay, click that bottom face. Okay. Make sure it says face one here. Okay. Then checkbox. Okay, next we're going to apply a load to the opposite side. We're going to add a force. And you see that when we hold over the top face, it has arrows down. Click that and then click reverse direction. Now they're going the other way. This is going to be in newtons, so figure out what your conversion is. I'm just going to write 650 newtons on. Hit checkbox. 
next thing we're going to do is click uh, run this study. You can get more advanced in terms of uh, choosing a different size mesh or um, things like that if you have more complicated geometries. But this is very simple. Okay. So from here we have uh, the von Mises stress. We'll just calculate it with a specific equation. And then our maximum will be red and our minimum will be blue. In which case we can see that we take on some uh, interesting geometric stresses at this sort of where the radii are um, inflected. We have an inflection point here. Um, this is just for stress, so this is related to cross-sectional area. Um, we also notice that on the side here we have a red color that is darker red than any of these colors. So that should tell us that the stresses on this surface are higher. The other thing we want to know is the um, if we right click these and, and put animate, we can actually see it stretch and we can slow this way down so we can see frame by frame where is that happening. And we could create a video file from that as well if we needed to. The next thing is we could choose displacement, we could show that. And this will just say that we are fixed on this side and pulling from this side. So that doesn't really tell us much information. The next one is strain. And this will say how much is each part of our piece stretching. Right? So this is the whole idea of having a dog bone shape is that the middle is stretching the most. Right? And the edges are not the ends are larger cross sections, so they don't stretch as much. So, uh, you may have more complicated fixtures and loads and things like that. Um, sometimes you can get around some errors by putting uh, two parts together or adding some additional geometry to make the area that you're applying loads to or pulling from a little bit easier to select and to allow deformation on the end faces of your actual part. But that's the basic tutorial of catting up a simple dog bone and running it through simulation. If you want to get back to your model, you can click down here to get back to your part. And if you want to export this to uh, get a 3D printed model, you would just file, uh, save as, and choose STL under the type of file. And that's it.